There's just so much flowering in this garden and everything's blooming all at once. It's mind boggling. A few years ago, Fine Gardening had the pleasure of visiting a garden that was arguably the most colorful and floriferous landscape we'd ever seen. This was a beautiful piece of property owned by Beth and Cappy Rothman in Squim, Washington, and it truly took our breath away. In fact, we had to pull over before even arriving at the front door to peer through the metal gate that separates the driveway from the main garden. The one thing you notice about this garden immediately is just how ridiculously colorful it is. It's truly breathtaking. The landscape was planned, planted, and maintained by garden designer Sharon Nyenheis, whose work has been featured in the pages of Fine Gardening numerous times. Sharon's challenge for this particular garden was designing it to have one peak. Now that might seem like a bad idea, but designing for one peak doesn't mean that the landscape only looks good in one season. It just means that you choose plants that put on their best show during the same six to eight week period of time. This garden is in the Pacific Northwest, so a midsummer peak when the rains have passed and the temperatures have warmed up was ideal. The plants Sharon chose did not all bloom during the peak, but most of them did. Some of her favorites were border jewel, Himalayan knotweed, the annual diacea, and an assortment of roses, Asiatic lilies, and perennial geraniums. The garden consists of a series of burned island beds that all come together in a labyrinth-like layout. Between each bed are concentric gravel paths that crunch underfoot. The gray color of the stone provides the perfect stage for an array of colorful plants to spill softly into the walkways. As you meander down the pathways surrounded by beds filled with plants, you start to get an Alice in Wonderland feeling. At the center of the garden, the gravel pathways meet up with a circular patio built of earth tone pavers. Here you'll find a small French bistro set an ideal spot for watching hummingbirds drink from the purple and magenta blossoms of the surrounding fuchsias. If you look just beyond the small patio, you'll notice some different, more textural plants. Upon closer inspection, it'll become quickly clear that you've stumbled onto the outer rim of the garden, where the island beds are filled with vegetables and edible flowers. The centerpiece of the main bed here sports a large teepee, covered in either nasturtiums or scarlet runner beans, depending on the year. Since this is a garden that peaks in midsummer, vegetables like rainbow chard, dinosaur kale, and purple cabbage, as well as edible flowers like orange marigolds were a natural addition. When mid-July hits, these delicious plants hit their stride, looking as good as they taste. An arbor covered in sky blue clematis vines marks the outermost path on the back side of the bed, which is used mostly for harvesting the vegetables. If you spun around 90 degrees at this point, you'd be looking back towards the more ornamental areas of the garden. Here, large zucchini plants and the ferny fronds of fennel mingle seamlessly with the spiky purple blooms of anise hyssop and the stately rounded form of a Mexican orange blossom shrub. Just beyond, you can see the top of the plants that fill the most impressive bed of this entire garden. Walking a bit further back into the innermost area of the garden is a bed that makes visitors' jaws drop to the ground. A layered look makes everything here appear full. Although the first things that you notice are the blooms, the array of heights and the deliberate placement of the various plants are what really make this bed super lush. There are a plethora of Sharon's favorite plants here, including Joe Pieweed, Summer Skies African Lily, Sonata Cosmos, and Gold Fountain Sedge. Although it would be easy to stay in this garden for a week and never see it all, eventually all good things must come to an end. 
Turn slightly left to take yet another gravel path back out towards the driveway. Japanese bloodgrass lines the walkway and points the way out with its vibrant red blades. It's hard not to be distracted though by the blue globe thistles and their low growing twin, blue lobelia, on your way out. Before you reach the exit, you're reminded of why this garden is compelling, even outside of its peak. Although mid-August is bursting with blooms, a few strategically placed evergreens and stone sculptures are the stars in the off-season. These year-round structures, however, don't distract from the peak, but rather serve as a backdrop to the main event. Pivot just slightly right and you'll notice the entrance gate to the driveway is just ahead. As the sun sets on the day, catching the ornamental grass plumes just right, it's easy to see why designing a garden for one peak is truly magical.